As air travel rebounds, so has unruly behavior aboard planes. That includes an incident on Southwest, which resulted in a flight attendant losing two teeth this last weekend. Earlier this week, the Homeland Security Secretary issued a warning to passengers who don't behave. We're not going to tolerate uh, behavior that threatens uh, the well-being of the public, uh, the employees that bravely are on the front lines uh, to facilitate the travel uh, for individuals who want to reunite with friends and family. Joining us now is Sarah Nelson. She's international president of the Association of Flight Attendants. And Sarah, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us to talk about this. I, I was good pretty you, stunned Becky. reading the initial coverage of, of what happened on that Southwest flight and then seeing some of the video that's been out on Twitter. Um, this does not look like a provoked situation. The passenger had said she was doing this in self-defense, but swinging and hitting hard, punching the flight attendants multiple times until someone else got involved and tried to settle things down. I mean, this this is kind of nuts. What are you seeing right now in the air? It's complete nuts, and it's a constant combative attitude. And um, this is just something we've never seen before in aviation to this level. Already in the first five months of this year, we have more than 20 times the numbers of unruly passenger events that we would have in a full year. And um, it's got to stop. And so the, there's, it's no coincidence that, that the secretary is speaking out like that. We have been asking for that. We've been asking for clear leadership uh, from the government, from our airlines, from everyone to understand what the rules are, what the consequences are if you act out. And really, this is also a product of Air travel not yet being rationalized, not yet being back to what it was. We're at about 60% demand of what we were uh, prior to COVID. We don't have business travelers back. We don't have international travel back. And this is an environment that we just have never seen before, and we can't wait for it to be over. What, what does the, the lower demand have to do with, with, with these incredible scenes that we're watching play out? It, 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 are you suggesting that airlines are, are not as strict with things because they're not able to, because they're afraid of scaring more passengers off? What are you talking about? No, actually, and thank you for that, uh, Becky, because I want to clear that up. Mm -hmm. We don't have as many airplanes in the air as we used to. We've got 60% of the travel demand. It's really more about the fact that we don't have people on the planes who are used to flying, who know um, sort of the program when you fly. Typically, what flight attendants will do is when we see a conflict arise on the plane, uh, we're trained to de-escalate. We look for our helpers. It's very difficult when you don't have people on the plane who are regularly flying, who sort of know the program, who are typical people that we would go to to help at least create peer pressure, um, but also help to try to calm down these incidents. And so it's, it's just a different environment um, with these full planes and people ready to get out and also being told that everything that we are doing to try to keep people safe in this public health emergency is a political issue rather than a public health necessity. They've been set up to believe that this is a combative space and most of these issues are over mass compliance. Wow. Um What's the solution? I, I know that in some cases the flight attendants uh, union has asked for additional air marshals to be on, on board. What, what other measures could be taken? What do you think would actually de-escalate the situation in the planes? Well, look, a lot of times these events are exacerbated by alcohol. So we have been asking the hmm. government and the airlines to make sure that we're not selling alcohol right now because that's only adding to the problem that is very clearly uh, out of control. And um, we also would like to see more airplanes getting back up in the air and giving us a little space to deal with this. You know, uh, people didn't necessarily like sitting right next to another person on a plane before we started giving each other a six foot berth. But uh, here we are on the other side of coronavirus. People are ready to or not quite on the other side. We're not through the pandemic yet. We continue to need to have all these safety precautions in place to keep everyone safe. And uh, people sometimes when they're jammed into a close space with all this pent up uh, tension and then being told that we're at odds with each other, they're coming with a combative attitude rather than 
just the desire to have a safe, uneventful flight. I, I do really want to be very clear, though. You know, we always remember and recognize the outliers and the bad incidents. And it's still the vast majority of people who really do want to come to the door of the airplane and have a safe flight. I'll say that, you know, this new phenomenon in error is also a threat to our jobs. Because if people start to think that this is the new norm for air travel, um, why would you want to do it? Uh, so we really have to get this under control because we need to keep people safe, but also because we've got to get back to a place where air travel was before this pandemic started. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.